The tunnels is a ghastly place, as Maria reminds us. It is like a favela, a lawless area filled with bloodshed and violence. But there is an individual who hopes, who strives to eradicate the injustice faced through a less violent and more optimistic approach. Lee Hyung-go is first portrayed standing at the end of the tunnel, awaiting the arrival of Maria and Ji Tai. Upon seeing an unconscious Maria slung across the wounded Ji Tai's back, Hyang Go is shocked by the sight, yet he immediately dives into a question, uncaring of both of their severe injuries. When he does not get the response he is looking for, his eyes turn cold. In the next few scenes, we learn he is an extremely persuasive individual, his strongest strengths in negotiation and persuasion. We see his keen awareness and analytical mind come into play, immediately describing Ji Tai as a hellhound, an individual that leaves destruction in his wake, highly unstable and volatile, a perfect encapsulation of Zhou Ji Tai, despite only being in his presence for less than a day. He is the more rational, the calmer side to mellow out Ji Tai's anger and insanity. In the aftermath of Ji Tai's bloody battle with Lim Hyang Chao and the gang, Hyang Go tries to reason with Ji Tai, attempting to calm him down, even when his life is on the line. He is clearly an anomaly, his demeanour and actions making him a clear outlier in a place stained with blood. Looking back on the conversation between Ji Tai and Hyang Go, in the aftermath of the party for Zhang Bo Mi, celebrating her joining Steelworks and betraying Red Hell, we can see the impact of certain experiences that Hyang Go had to face. Nursing a bottle of liquor, he recalls the troubled times. Young kids facing hardships, struggling so much to even create a functioning place of residence. Just kids trying to emulate adults. Left forgotten, abandoned in a once thriving and glorious city. We're seeing Hyang Gao's memories that despite such struggles, there are small sources of comfort for him. Whether that be in his group of friends, or the kind of bookworm, Bai Mansu, and Ojin. These two individuals, coupled with the daily experiences of living rough, have such a profound impact on the individual the young girl will become in the future. The kind old bookworm, Bai Man Su, is described as a warm and affectionate person, wise and generous. He shares his love of books to the two young children, often going to great lengths to find Hyang Go and O Jing to bring them a vast collection to read. As well as discussing philosophical aspects with the children, he also imparts some of his own wisdom to them and protects them from the horrors of the tunnel life, shielding their eyes from the corpse hanging on the tree, a victim of suicide. Yet, under the happiness of books and the comfort he brings to them, Mind Su was ultimately depressed. Working and slaving like a dog for all his life, he finally reached the tipping point. Utilizing alcohol as a means to curb the pain and disappointment that is now his life, he effectively destroys his brain, his mind consumed in an endless cycle of pleasure and pain. Despite struggling with these difficulties, the children still aid him. Persevering through his drunken rants and lashings of anger, they feed and provide for their parental figure. When all seems to get better, and there seems to be a glimmer of hope on the horizon, Mansu decides to go on one last adventure. An adventure that cost him his life. And now the children are left to pick up the broken pieces. Ironically enough, the individual, the guardian who shielded them from the horrors of the tunnels, would scar the children himself as they looked upon the remnants of his own suicide. Imagine trying so hard to put someone back on the right track, and everything seems to work well. There is happiness, there is a sense of content, there is hope, yet it is ultimately dashed out. And this becomes the turning point for the children. This event pushes both of them to pursue their respective fields, one medicine and one psychology, in an attempt to broaden the understanding of the human mind. Both Ojin and Hyang Go share a common goal, the improvement of mankind, starting first with the people that reside in the tunnels. But they choose different paths. Hyang Go decides to pursue psychology, believing that a multitude of experiences as well as an understanding of the environment is the key in human salvation. Whereas Ojin chooses to pursue medicine, believing there to be a way through medical procedures to give humans enlightenment, to accumulate their flaws and extract it like a tumour, allowing them to live a life unburdened by their sins. 
So Tunnel Vision is on quest to make the tunnels a better place. Hogol doesn't realize his own failures, his own flaws. We often see him nursing a liquor bottle or drunk out of his mind, reminiscent of Man Su. It appears he is more affected by this event than he makes it out to be, indulging and in emulating Man Su's bad habits. After all, alcohol not only poisons the body but also the mind, as the previous panel state. His friendship with Ojin has eroded to a point where reconciliation is but a pipe dream due to conflicting ideologies. This is estranged both of them. Furthermore, his efforts to lead the tunnels out of the hole that they have dug themselves in proves to ultimately be a fruitless endeavour. There seems to be a sort of selfishness I see within Hyangol. So driven, so devoted to seeing his ambition come to light and perhaps realising that he's on the cusp of failure, he pushes a broken individual shortly after a traumatic experience to fight in hopes of changing the tunnel's ways. He pushes the burden onto an outsider, a person that should not be even affiliated or associated with his plight and it comes back to bite him. We witness Jitai's fall and the subsequent the collapse of the tunnels, yet I do not hold any malice towards him. His intentions were good, he did lessen the tensions between the opposing factions. Instead of an all out brawl or bloodbath that would result in hundreds of deaths, he reduced it to a one on one deathmatch. His plans proved to be successful, albeit only temporarily, as in the end, he only prolonged the inevitable. There was already friction brewing between the two factions and already talks of conquest long before Ho Go initiated his plans. Kang Du, the head of Steelworks, simply wanted to wait it out, seeing if Hogo's plans came to any fruition, and in the end, they didn't meet his expectations. Hogo was too slow, and Kang Du, his patience wearing thin, initiated the start of the Second Turf War. Hogo could not change their minds. Even his friend, Gian Kyak, an individual he has known for all their lives, joined Kang Du to initiate this. Their apathetic nature towards the brutal stabbings of other people and their lack of hesitation to thrust their blades to deal the killing blow. As Giang Hyak points out, we are ourselves. These people, moulded by the tunnel's horrors, could not could only walk one path. As a longtime friend of Hogo, he admires him for what he has accomplished, respects him for trying his best, but he understands the laws of the tunnels, and a man like Hogo will simply be chewed up and spit out. Jitai further reinforces Hogo's hopelessness through his speech towards him. He states that everyone is either weak or bad. They are either gambling fools who do not value lives, disposable trash, or just lazy people looking for a fun time. With such people surrounding Hogo, what is he even doing here? To further drive in the point, all this suffering, all this violence was because of him. Jitai believes that his actions unknowingly made him the worst after all. We see Hogo's frozen expression and the thoughts that plague his conscience. Why is he even doing this? There are books stacked high, parallel to the books the old bookworm stacked before taking his life. I believe that they symbolize his knowledge, his sense of purpose, and rationality to justify the actions he took in order for him to get here. Yet all of this knowledge, all of this preparation is useless in the peril that he finds himself in. Sitting amok a chaotic crowd with a guillotine, and that his own arm bound in chains. He has found himself in a situation where rationality is thrown out of the window. How can one hope to make sense of a senseless situation? How do you? You cannot. And this is where he unravels for Yang Gao. Reflecting on his choices, he asks the question, was it for them or just for himself? Did he want a better life for the tunnels and its people, or was he trying to better it for himself? He tried to change the environment, to plant the seeds of change, yet the result is this. Remembering back to Ojin's words about how influencing environments are just a lazy form of optimism, he realizes that Ojin is right. The blade remains there, tempting him. He places his head on the chopping board. What pulls him back is Cha Sa Wol, his student. He was at a breaking point. Jitai's nihilistic thinking that all the people in the tunnels are inherently wrong and should not be safe was consuming him. He was blaming himself for this mess, and about to end his life, his student saved him. He himself guided her out of the tunnels, and now standing before him is an individual worried about her teacher's safety, a stark contrast to the deranged and highly unstable person that was in the tunnels. 
She checks him to make sure he's alright before bouncing off to Maria, he stares at her and then at his hand. Unlike the longing and nostalgia, the pain in his eyes as he sits in the dark, his hand outstretched towards a memory that was so long ago. This time he is met with an epiphany in the realization that Jitai is wrong. It is inherently human to want to better yourself and get yourself out of impoverished conditions. Accepting the opposite is accepting Jitai's philosophy that everyone is wrong down to one's own DNA, and that is fundamentally incorrect and a simpler train of thought to process. After all, Jitai hates himself and is too tired to understand the injustices in society. Hogo created the Healthy Seeds as a result of environments that allowed for them to break free from the darkness of the tunnels. Cha Sao Wo, Yang Jun and the others, they symbolize the fruits of his labor. Understanding now of what his purpose is, he guides the students to the exit of the tunnel, while simultaneously holding off throngs of the depraved crowd, even Giang Hyak himself, who has come to kill the students under the orders of Kang Du. His quick eye is also able to discern Maria's relationship with Ji Tai, not a relationship born out of love, but born out of contempt and revenge. With wariness in mind, he thanks the unconscious Ji Tai and urges him to live for himself, reminiscent to Ki Hung's remarks that Ji Tai is starting to act like his owner. And like the stars in the eyes of Man Tzu, now reflected in Hao Go, he rushes to meet the crowd. A man so defined and strengthened by his beliefs in the good of people, in the good of humanity, that he chooses to sacrifice himself for his family. An individual that faces the humans at their worst and still believes in their good, that resides in them. In a dark and desolate place, there still remains a light that burns bright, that is, Li Hao Gao.